Hey, I'm Melanie Johnson, along with my co-host, Jen Foster. We are both 13-time best-selling authors. We've published over 2,500 books and made all of our authors number one bestsellers. We own Elite Online Publishing. If you want to become a best-selling author, look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Now, welcome to the podcast that shares secrets from top industry experts that show you how to get lasting success and results. This is the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hi, everyone. It's Melanie Johnson with my business partner, Jen Foster. Hey, Jen. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing today? Oh, it's a fantastic day. It's always a good day to come on our podcast, right? So come and subscribe to our podcast. Share it with your friends because today you are going to learn about building billion-dollar brands. That B with uh, for billion, not million, billion, okay? And we're going to talk about video marketing. I'm really excited to dive into this. We have a huge expert with us today. So not only are you going to learn about billion dollar brands, how to hook people in with your videos if you're doing any video marketing and how to get great testimonials, um, you are going to get connected to someone who has just written three bu- three books, not one, not two, but three books. So um, we love that because we are publishers and we think people who write books are just awesome. So we're going to dive in. We have Rick Cesar with us today, but first remember to subscribe and share the podcast with somebody. And let's start learning about billion dollar brands, Rick. Oh my gosh, I want to be all a part of this. Oh, great. And Melanie and Jen, thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm, I'm a big believer in book publishing and the power of marketing with a book. So this will be a fun conversation. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Rick, and how you got into the marketing world and writing sure. these books. Yeah. So I, um, for about 25 years, I owned a direct-to-consumer marketing agency. I, I live in Seattle, and we had lots of clients all over the country and you know, it started out, um, I'm gonna date myself now, way back in 1989, I started a company called uh, Trillium Health Products. And we actually educated the, um, the, com- the country about the benefits of juicing. We, we promoted and built the Juice Man brand and the Bread Man bread machine, kind of teaching people a, a healthier way to eat at the time. And that company was very successful. We were in the right place at the right time and the right marketing and it grew. We did 75 million in sales in about four years and then we're able to sell the company. Uh, I thought I was gonna retire and took some time off and then another Seattle company called me called Optiva Corporation and they were marketing this new toothbrush that was a $150 product and we're having trouble gaining traction in the marketplace. It turned out that toothbrush was the Sonicare toothbrush, and I helped them do their marketing initially to to, uh, build that business. And then from there, um, I didn't like plan to be in the agency business, but people started calling me and asking me, hey, can you help me with marketing? And the company that bought our juicer business was called Salton Housewares, based in Chicago. And they came out with a product that was this slanted grill, and that turned out to be the George Foreman grill. And so, you know, I've been very fortunate to be able to work with good companies and good products. And, you know, after George Foreman, the OxyClean people called and I did, um, I don't know if you remember Billy Mays, the, uh, 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 who was on TV. I did Billy's very first infomercial and about 10 others after that and helped launch OxyClean. And then more recently, um, you might've seen some of the TV commercials for the GoPro camera. And that was a really fun project to work on uh, because it was one of the first that, was able to combine TV with online marketing and, and YouTube videos and things like that. So a lot of really fun companies, fun products that was you know my background in writing these books. All right, holy cow. I mean, just those brands alone. I mean, Billy Mays, my, uh, the TV stations I used to own, we ran infomercials a lot. Yes. And you know, so I saw a lot of Billy Mays on our TV stations. And mm-hmm. I mean, OxyClean, hello. I mean, the GoPro camera, Huge. These are just huge, huge brands. So tell us, walk, walk us through that process. How do you start with a brand? Maybe there's someone, well, even us, like we're starting out, we're a company that's been around for four years. How do you take a company and blow up their brand? What do you do? What is some of that process? Well, it's great. That's a great question. And, and you know, for me, uh, there's a lot of different approaches, but one approach that I really like, and I talk about it in, in my books is, I like to talk to customers or clients of your business. And so I'll schedule a a day or two of what I call a testimonial shoot. And I kind of go through the steps, how you can find these people uh, through an email sequence. And I'll, I'll, I'll basically interview these people. And I might talk to anywhere from 10 to 20 people. 
And during that time, I'll find out exactly what they like about your business, what they don't like, um, you know, the things that made them purchase your services. And then the best part is I'm videotaping this. So then not only am I doing real market research, which is better than any focus group, now I have all the information about, about the hot points that I can use to market your business. And I believe personally that testimonials are one of the strongest marketing tools. And so we deploy those um, through YouTube videos, on your website, um, lots of places. And so that's kind of a first step that I always take with almost any business and it's you know worked for me. I love that. I love that. Well, let's dive into some of the the things and the tools that you give us in your in your billion dollar book. This is the very first thing you need to identify and know is your USP. So let's talk about USPs and people who don't know what that is. It's your unique selling position. So right, is that what it stands for? Exactly, unique proposition. selling proposition. Proposition. Yeah, and and you know it's funny. It's it's kind of um, marketing one hundred and one. They teach you that. But you would be shocked at how many businesses don't differentiate themselves. And really, that's what you're looking at. What is different or unique about your business? And I, you know, I can use some examples from some of the products I mentioned. Um, you know, the GoPro camera, they were going up against, here's a guy who invented a camera in his garage. They were going up against Sony and Panasonic and Kodak, which is bankrupt. But what he did was he basically carved out a niche that the camera was used for extreme athletes that, you know, uh, snowboarders, um, people jumping off of cliffs, parachuting, that type of thing. And basically was able to identify a niche that the other camera companies weren't in. And that's what differentiated themselves. And if you think about it, it's the same with the Sonicare toothbrush. It was the first Sonic toothbrush to come out, but um, just, being sonic, uh, and again, I go into um, a great detail about the difference between features and benefits. So sonic technology is a feature, but the benefit to that, and the reason the sonic hair toothbrush took off is because it was able to clean beyond the bristles. And if we educated people, I'm a big believer in selling through education. Ah. We educated people about gum disease, and you know then that the sonic technology would enable you to clean beyond the bristles and reach the nooks and crannies where bacteria hide. So every, I believe every single business has, not only has a unique selling proposition, but um, needs to basically identify that and then use that in their marketing and their website. And that's what will differentiate your company from other people that are in your same category. Yeah. And some companies struggle with, um you know, finding that and going through the process of that, like if they don't have the resources to do it, um, it can be kind of a challenge. Yes, I, I agree. Um, so you talk about um, something that I think that you say is great for small businesses. Um, it's direct brand selling. What is, I've not heard that term before, direct brand selling. What does that mean? And how does it help small businesses? Because a lot of our audience, I think, have more small businesses and getting started. Right. So that's really kind of an offshoot of my background. You mentioned infomercials. And I just want to mention, um, I had used television marketing infomercials, but really the underlying concept um, is direct marketing, direct response marketing. And really, that's just um, basically the concept of if you're going to do any advertising, you're able to measure it and you're, you're looking to get some type of positive revenue response uh, mm -hmm. based on the advertising. That's different than conventional quote unquote brand advertising where that's really tailored towards bigger companies that can afford big budgets and they don't measure it. So um, these concepts work way back in the 1920s with the Sears catalog, with direct mail, it worked in radio, it worked in TV, but you know, the same concepts work with online marketing, with Facebook advertising, with Instagram advertising. So and to answer your question, it's really just understanding direct to consumer, direct response marketing principles and how to utilize them in your advertising and your messaging. So what are those principles? Break some of those principles down for us because not all of us are as savvy as you, Rick. <laughs> Good. You guys might be a, because we might become a client because I'm, you, I, I'm writing a new book. You can help me and I might be able to help you with, with what you're looking to do. Um, but really, um, I, I kind of said it in a nutshell. I know it's, it's, um, it, it's without going into a huge amount of detail, 
it's direct response marketing is really just um, it's paid advertising, but paid advertising where you're measuring all the results of the advertising. And the secret to all of these brands that I talked about and mentioned are that um, that we were able to develop some type of paid advertising program where we were able to get $2 back for every dollar in advertising. And that's the ability that really gives small businesses uh, an advantage over large businesses. Let me just give you the Go, a real quick um, GoPro example. Um, GoPro basically um, became well known through their 30 second spots. And they basically used, um, user generated footage. So we started every 30 second spot out with a, a GoPro logo. So people knew exactly what the commercial was about. Then some user generated footage, but then here's where the direct branding or direct response came in. We had an offer at the end of every spot that said, go to our website. Someone will win one of everything we make every single day. So three great things happened. People would go to the website to register for the contest and we would develop a mailing list where we could remarket to. The second great thing is they would go to the GoPro website, they would see other great videos, and they would share them with their friends, and that created the viral effect. And then the third part was people would get to the website, they'd like the product, they'd purchase it, generating revenue, which we would put back into the advertising. So we could have made those commercials without an offer at the end, um, and that's one of the key things in direct response marketing is always having an offer in your marketing or your video so that you're not only you're getting people excited about what you're talking about you're giving them uh guidance as to the next step go to our website for more information you know mm -hmm. go to the website to purchase the product find us on amazon so mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the basic uh general generalization of of direct response marketing i love that having that call to action at the end really mm -hmm. helps helps a lot and it kind of goes into that over promising right, or under promising and over delivering right Absolutely. Where, where with gopro you were saying you know visit the website we we have a winner every day and Absolutely. so it, it kind of gave that more like not only do we have a great product and have a really great camera that you can take on your extreme sporting events but you can win one you can get one for free so I absolutely that. and i got that at in the building billion dollar brands book that's a, a quote from richard branson and a basic philosophy on how he built uh the virgin brand and all the different businesses is basically ba uh, saying that he was always under promise um and then over deliver and and i've used that in my marketing with the oxyclean um you you mentioned you saw some of those infomercials you not only when someone ordered the OxyClean off of TV, we would automatically supersize it and go from a 12 ounce container to a 16 ounce, but we'd also throw in free samples of other products they own, like Kaboom Tub and Tile Cleaner or Orange Glow Polish. So when people got it, they said, wow, this is more than I ordered. They'd tell their friends about it and it created kind of a snowball effect. So I've used that uh, over -prom uh, under promising over delivering in a lot of the different brand building we've done. Yeah, I think that should be standard for everybody who's doing business. You know, yes. that expectation you set up and then they're like, wow, this is more than I thought. It's a nice surprise. You mentioned about videos and the power of video. Um, you have like kind of a secret of the best hooks for videos and to start a hoodie of video. So talk about that. What are these uh, okay. secret hooks? So again, a lot of the things I talk about, um, uh, to some people, they might be a little bit common sense, but again, in the marketplace, you don't see a lot of people using it. So I read a book in my 20s called, uh, by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And believe it or not, creating a good video speech that people listen to. Uh -huh. And so if you can structure whether it's a PowerPoint presentation or if you're speaking in front of a group or from the stage, you'll have a lot of success with the video. And Dale's uh, Carnegie's old formula for giving a speech is tell them what you're going to say, say it, and then tell them what you said. And I, and I know that's a simple formula, um, but really there's, there's, the same way you try to hook an audience in in the speech, you can do it with a with a question. Um, do you need to lose? Would you do you want to uh, lose ten pounds? Do you want to get in better shape? Do you want more energy? 
So asking a question is one way to hook the people in, but then you better give them the answer in the rest of the video. But really that's something that um, for a target audience, if you ask the right question, it'll hook them in. Another way is a factoid. Um, when we made the, the first uh, Juice Man infomercial, uh, there had just been a story on CNN uh, that talked about this scientific study about how an element in broccoli was shown to be able to prevent breast cancer. So we started out the infomercial with, did you know there was this element, Indo-3-carbonyl, found in broccoli that can help prevent breast cancer? And then people were like, wow, that's interesting. Um, and then we went on to say how with juicing, you could get more broccoli in your diet. So um, that's the other way. And the last way is, is something that is out in the marketplace, um, basically telling a story, you know, a quick story. Mm -hmm. And um, that one's a little bit, takes a little bit more time to hook people in. But those are three, three quick ways um, to, to hook the viewer into your video. I love that. I love that you talked about story because, you know, with authors, you know, a lot of people will want to write their business book and talk about all the things, you know, that they can put in their book that will teach other people. But if they don't include the story, they're not going to hook the audience. It becomes right? very dry information. It's very dry. A hundred percent. You know, it's funny when we talk about the juicing business, um, this was back when the only way to publish at the time was through, you know, big publishers. We're talking about the early 90s. And we had so much exposure for, through PR and uh, the database marketing, and we were doing live seminars that we actually published three books about juicing. Uh, one was called The Juice Man's Power of Juicing, and it became a New York Times bestseller, um, mm -hmm. and it sold over a million copies. The other one's called Juicing for Life, and then mm -hmm. the other one was called, called The Power of Juicing, and those books, it, it becomes, a, and I'm not teaching you guys anything new, they become a snowball where you put the book out, it gets some awareness, then you get more um, exposure because um, the press or PR is interested in it and it things snowball. And I believe it's a book's one of the best marketing tools that any business or person All right, everyone can said have. That's just a quote right there. Rick said it. <laughs> a book but it's is true. the best marketing I, tool you can have. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take that and post it on Facebook. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> okay, that's fine with me because I, 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 believe in, I believe in it because of having lived through it myself. And it's funny that you, you, know, you deal in this uh, day in, day out, and maybe have to convince some people, but I've seen it firsthand, the power of a good book and what it can do. Yeah, you know, we were talking about a call to action earlier, and we um, remind our authors so many times they don't have that in their book. So we're having them, okay, your manuscript's done, but we didn't see that you put a call to action, and we always like to put a call to action in the beginning of the book. Um, matter of fact, Jen just walked an author through this process who um, had a book out. He was already an author and said, let's go through your manuscript. Gosh, look on the Kindle right here. You can put a link, a hyperlink in the Kindle for your call to action that they could click on without even buying your book. So a lot of people don't even realize that, you know, if they do the preview of the book, someone could click on your call to action and take them right to the call to action, even without buying the book. Yeah, that's so. awesome. And I congratulate both you guys for realizing the potential of that. Because again, many people, the, again, these are simple, basic things, but many authors, marketers, um, yeah. you know, e-commerce people, they forget to do it. And, and it's, it's amazing. And, you know, being in the direct response to marketing industry for so long, I've seen the difference between including a call to action and not including a call to action. And, you know, you get two, three, four, five times the response if you have a good call to action. Yeah, we're learning that. And we're learning um, on our social media. I think that's one of the things that we don't do well is put calls to action in our social media. So we're missing, we're spending the time to post. So a lot of businesses out there, you're spending the time, spending the money on social media, but you have zero calls to action and you're wondering why you're not getting engagement or growing. Um, so take Rick's advice, put a call to action everywhere, everywhere that you can. I think that's one of the big takeaways here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, some people are afraid to, they're like, oh my gosh, I, why, you know, that'll scare people away. But again, if people are reading your social media post or your blog post or your Facebook post or whatever, and they want more information and you don't tell them where to go, you're yeah. doing them a disservice. And then you have to realize that when you tell them the call to action, you, like we talked before, you're delivering great information to them. So you're doing them a service. I love that. 
Well, tell people where they can go to find you so they can get more information about you. I will. And first of all, I just want to say I wish we could talk for an hour because there's so much great, great uh, stuff and you guys are both so easy to talk to. But anyway, if you want more information about me or my books or my blogs, uh, go to my personal website, which is rickcesari.com, R-I-C-K. C-E-S-A-R-I, rickcesari.com. And I have a CTA, a call to action. You can download um, a free um, ebook about the three most powerful types of online video content uh, to engage the viewer. And uh, that's free if you go to my website. Terrific. Great. I'll go get it right now. <laughs> Sounds perfect. So buy the books, become a billion dollar brand. That's what we're going to be working for. Um, and make sure you do a call to action. That's the biggest message today, I think. And do that hook in your video. Um, I love all that. I was taking notes. So if you saw me looking away, it was because I was writing in my notepad. So also remember to subscribe to our podcast. That's one of our calls to action. And of course, our call to action is if you'd like to write a book, please contact us. Um, we are known for making our authors number one bestsellers and teaching them how to leverage their book, just like Rick said, one of the best things you can do. So we will see you next time. Um, and, and we're looking forward to hearing your success stories on becoming a billion dollar brand. Bye. Are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.